and welcome back. Today's little demo is all about this little thing here, which is an MP3 player, standalone, or of course, as we're interested in, controlled by the ubiquitous Arduino, whether it's a Uno, Nano, whatever. So I've actually got it set up on this breadboard initially, because I've been experimenting with what we can do with the Arduino, and I've got uh, another breadboard up here ready to swap these over. Um, so let's uh, have a look, first of all, what it can do. Now, I've powered it up with um, 5 volts via this little cable here that goes into a USB socket. So it's a 5 volt supply. Um, when you initially power it up, um, it goes to full volume. So um, stand by for a bit of uh, noise. Um, I've just got a little tiny speaker like this. This is, um, what do they call these? Pillow speakers. Right, you can put them under your pillow and listen to stuff at night if you want. Um, so I've got one of those just for the music. Now, I can't work out whether this is mono or stereo, I think it's mono, because even though it's got speaker one, speaker two, it seems to indicate that there's, um, well, I don't know, to be quite honest, yeah, it, it doesn't work in stereo, certainly not on that speaker, although of course it could be my cable that's a bit dodgy, who knows? Okay, I have worked it out now. The output from the speaker is in fact mono, so speaker one, speaker two just goes into a single speaker, but where you've got DAC R and DAC L, they are in fact left and right outputs for another amplifier, you know, your hi-fi or something like that. So stereo is not available on the speaker itself, but could be for earphones, for example. They can also supply earphones, but the speaker is most definitely mono. Okay, just thought I'd clear that up. So all we've done is connected power in, the speaker to two wires, this, this third one, this orange one here is not connected to anything, it's just all parked. Um, and then I've got this one wire which is connected to ground on the other side of the module. And if I tap this pin down the bottom, I'm hoping something's going to happen. Tap. Whoa! whoa, whoa. Oh, I said it would be loud. There. Now by holding that on, a long press as they say, it reduces the volume significantly. Now, if you're expecting Beyonce or Justin Timberlake or somebody, um, you're out of luck because uh, the music I'm playing here is copyright and royalty free um, from the website that you're seeing on the web screen right now. So big thanks to them for giving me um, a few tracks to play about with. If I press this again, it skips to the next track. And again. So long press decreases the volume and uh, a short press moves it onto the next track. So in fact, there are multiple um, things on here. Um, you know, everything that you think about, it's got equalization, five sets of equalization, you know, pop, rock, classic, and all the rest of it. Um, stop, start, next, previous, everything that you expect from an MP3 player, really. And of course, they're, they're pushing this as something that you can have in cars, in factories. As a freestanding MP3 player, as fascinating as this is, it's not really where we, we Arduinites, really want to be, is it? We want to control it via one of these. Is it feasible then to add one of these to just about every project we got? Well, more or less. Let's have a look to see where I got it from and you'll see the price. Go to my browser. Um, now you can see here, look, um, £2.56, which is probably about, what, oh, three and a half dollars, something like that four maybe, from China. Um, as it happened, I didn't get it from China. I bought it from the EU warehouse because it was gonna be a lot quicker, about a week, if that. So I paid £3.48, which is, what, five, six dollars, something along that issue. Now, £3.48, okay, it's a tad high. Oh, does that convert? Let's have a look what it is in dollars. 4.88, there we are, that's not bad, is it? Um, having said that, as I said, it's a little bit high to put into every project, but let me see, 256, now what is that in dollars? 359, and that's much more reasonable. For 256, if I wanted some kind of, any some kind of uh, announcement or directions or something, this is most definitely doable, isn't it? Um, now, you've seen it in freestanding mode with basically nothing but a bit of wire attached to it. Uh, let's see what we can do then when we go to the actual Arduino board. So I'm going to move this module over to here. I've already got an Arduino connected up with some uh, code. 
and we'll see what it can do then. Right, see you in just two shakes of a lamb's tail. So here we are with the module moved over onto this breadboard. Um, connect up to Arduino. As I say, I've got some code on here, pretty simple stuff, um, just to get us all going. And I'm going to connect it up and we'll see what happens. Oh, incidentally, the first thing I do on here is reduce the volume. So I'll hold this up to the microphone. There we are, much more reasonable. So that's playing away. So, okay, great. So the Arduino has somehow managed to initiate this. Um, I'm just going to move the microphone closer to me, just in case that music rounds me out. Um, so let's have a look at the code to see exactly what we're doing here. Now, just before we come on to that, it's very important that you take note of this um, resistor network here. The transmitter and receiver pins from the Arduino must have these resistors in place because the MP3 player requires 3.3 volts of those pins um, anymore, and it'll probably damage it. So it's very simple, a 1K resistor and a 2K resistor on each of those lines, as I've shown in that diagram, and you'll be good to go. Okay, don't try and skip this step because bad things will probably happen to the MP3 player. Okay, all right, let's have a look at that code now. Okay, now while I talk, actually, I'm going to uh, disconnect this so it's rather distracting. Right, okay, back to normal. Now, this code is um, a strange amalgamation of my original code, stuff I got from the um, data sheet from DF Robot, who make this, this actual. Um, mp3 player and uh, another website I found which has a load of examples of what to do and the commands you can put out and in fact what he stated is that due, due to the errors in the DF robot site you can get yourself in a right old pickle so I'm going to include all that information at the bottom of this video so you can play about to your heart's content I mean there's nothing you can't do with this it can repeat tracks it can play tracks from a thousand folders each of which can have 999 tracks in or 2000 tracks it's it's amazing the other thing you can do like in shops where you're playing some music in the background and then you want some kind of staff announcement or an adver advertising announcement um, it can pause the current track play the advertising announcement and then resume the music track from where it finished so that's uh, obviously an application that they've been thinking of so here I've um, initially uh, just got down what I've worked out really was the commands. Okay, so that's um, easy enough to follow. There's quite a few fixed bytes in here actually. And I've got a couple of examples here, but that's not really of importance. We are using the software serial library here because, I mean, you don't have to. You can use the standard serial library because um, then you'd have to use, on the Arduino, you'd have to use pins one and zero but then you couldn't transmit anything back up to the serial monitor on your IDE so um, initially I used these zero and one but of course quickly discovered that I couldn't tell what was happening so I've moved the um, the pins up here to 10 and 11 software serial so I can still use the software window here this one this one down the bottom look and we'll have a look at what comes out there in just a sec. So here are some fixed bytes. Look, the start byte, end byte, version byte, data length, and info required out of the 10 bytes that this module always needs. Um, there's a couple of other bytes it needs, which is a checksum. So you can see how serious they're being and making sure that the data it receives is correct. Um, but the checksum is very easy to calculate. And I've got an example of that. So the setup here, basically, um, this is the MP3 software serial. That's what I'm using. This is our standard software monitor. So the MP3 is the software serial port. Um, and we're using send command, which is all written down below, just to um, send some commands over via the serial lines to the MP3 player. So this one here is the very first thing I said. Set the volume down to half. Um, set the equalizer settings to, I think, five is pop or rock or something. Um, well, we'll see how I look at that. But they do actually work. Um, specify the track to play. Well, that's the very first track, zero and zero. Um, just so you know, this first byte is a high byte, and the second byte is a low byte. And for the parameters, we unusually would use the high byte. Um, now, this one says play. And then what we do, let's have a look at the send 
send command. So what this is here, now I had a different version of this for myself wrapped up here and it was pretty ugly, quite frankly, as I was trying to work out what to do. And then I found this other website, which um, I'll post on here as well and below so you can have a look at his hard work. Um, basically, this is how you construct the checksum that goes in two bytes. And this is how you construct the 10 byte array and then we just send each byte one by one down the serial port, the software serial port. And we do need a delay of 30 milliseconds or thereabouts between successive commands. Okay. Now, the loop, well, at that point, of course, once we send, it starts playing the first track. But what I've got here is to say, um, listen for serial commands that I'm going to type in here. Let me just get rid of that. Um, there we are. So I can type some commands in here and then we're waiting for a response back. Oops, gone past it. Here we are. We're waiting for a response back from the MP3 player and it's always a 10 byte response. Um, and we'll see what it says. Now these are fairly obtuse, but it's all in the data sheet. There's nothing special about it. So let's let's play with this and just see what we can get it to do. Let me clear the um, software port and make it a little bit bigger there we are so we're going to plug this back in and play the first track again and then see what we can do right power's been restored i'm now going to press the reset button on the arduino okay and off it goes right to play the next track all we have to type in is one comma zero comma zero basically it's um a parameter less command it's just command one with no values so send that and lo and behold the track changes and the response we get back look oh no the, track, the response we got back was not success oh dear what does that mean uh, right back in just a sec while i work out what's going on right reset the arduino well unplugged it and plugged it back in again to see if that's going to help because we're also powering the mp3 module from um, the Arduino this time rather than independently so there's a 5 volt coming out directly into the mp3 module which is 5 volt tolerant just about they say really you should bring it down to about 4.3 volts but 5 volts seems okay right let's see if we can uh, send that command again one zero zero hmm typical isn't it you try all these things out first just to make sure it all works then on the day it decides not to play ball. Right, a quick reboot sorted things out. The uh, COM port got stuck, so the commands weren't actually uh, sending to it properly. I don't quite know what's going on. Anyway, it's all working now, and I've just put it into pause mode via um, a command, which was 1400. So to resume that, I should be able to say uh, playback 13, 1300. It should be resume play. Let's have a look. There we are all coming out good now other things you can do well as i said anything you can do really equalizer mode um, seven zero base is number five let's see if we can hear any difference hmm perhaps not perhaps it was already on that one let's try a different one um let's try jazz which would be seven zero Jazz be zero, one, two, three, four. Four. Let's see if that changes. Oh yeah. Basically a bit more muffled. Um what else? There's rock. Seven zero zero one two. So is this gonna change? Oh, the tracks <laughs> the tracks ended. Oh no. Now you notice actually it came back there in the uh, command window, it came back. I think this is uh, telling us that the track has ended, but I haven't actually looked at this 3D command properly yet. Now the reason why we're getting some info back, if we look at the, uh, the very beginnings of this code, some of these fixed length ones I'll put in. Look, I've said here, 
info required zero one. Now if you put zero zero in there you don't get anything back at all. But I thought for this we probably do want some values back so it's useful that they come back in. Um, so let's let's play the next song which would be one zero zero. That's where we started all this from. And yes, it's starting. Right, okay, that's enough playing about with that. So what else can we do? We can uh, reset it, playback, pause. You can specify the folder you want to play stuff from. Now the format of the tracks has to be slightly different to what you might expect. There's a DF robot data sheet. Uh, this one here. Right, this one here, let me just come out a bit. Right, this um, data sheet tells you a fair bit about it. Not quite enough as it happens. Um, here we are. Now this bit here, if you've noticed, it says look, the audio file name should be named with a four digit number like this. So a four digits and then whatever you want. So either nothing, just the mp3 or the, the name. So I've got all six tracks on here with um, you know the prefix 001 through 6. Oh, and also it has to be in an MP3 folder called MP3. Here we are. Now, I've yet to test this properly because I had it as MP3 capitals and it didn't work initially. So I've changed it to MP3 lowercase as it shows it here. Uh, and it all sprang into life, but that might have been due to my wiring or something. So just bear in mind, it might be case sensitive. Oh yes, and it even shows it here, look, as lowercase. So it's probably worth thinking about. It tells you here about putting an advertisement in the middle. There's a different link to how to do that. Now, this, this is okay to get you going, but there's actually a handbook like this one here, which I'll put a, a link to. This contains much more technical detail. Some of the stuff already appears in this one, but this contains a lot more detail about what it is you need to do and the format of some of the commands. I mean, that's basically it. I'm going to um, probably think of some project now to put this into because it'd be great, wouldn't it, if um, you had a track with a voice prompt that said, I don't know, low salt in water softener, for example. Not that I've got one of those coming up. Um, but quite frankly, for the, for the money that we're talking about here, um, how much was it again? Let's have a look. Two fifty-six from the warehouse, and was it three forty-eight from EU? I believe. Yeah, three forty-eight at today's price, isn't? But this DF player, I think it's pretty good quality. I've been testing it with some Sennheiser headphones. Let me just show you the ones here. So these are these are put them on. But there we are. These are in fact Sennheiser HD four one four Xs. Um, don't make them anymore but they're still a damn good set of headphones. And um, they sounded okay, actually. I mean, it was, it was in fact, better than okay. I'd say pretty good, given that the tracks I've downloaded are just some freebies. Um, I set the equalization to pop, I think it might have been, or rock, and it made a definite difference. So I'd say experiment and plug it into your Arduino project at the very earliest opportunity, because I think it's, it's pretty good. Um, I do believe it's time we had another track, so let's see what we can type in now. Um, you can, of course, um, play continuously for a folder or the single track or things like that. Just to get us going, though, we're just going to have 100, which is next track, please. Maestro, play. There we are. Brilliant. I mean, this is, this is really good. This is sort of the little tiny thing like this. They can really make a difference to somebody's project. If you've got voice commands or warnings or activations or whatever, it could really be something. Excellent. Okay. All the details down below. If you really enjoyed this, and I really hope you did, don't forget to uh, subscribe, share, thumbs up, all the rest of the gubbins. Okay. Thanks for watching. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. Please leave comments down below, subscribe, share, and give me a thumbs up. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.